Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We are just about to start round two. I'm Michael Hoyp. I'm joined by none other than Michael Flores. Say hi, Michael. I think that you should give me more of an introduction than that. What? I am the only 0 and 4 player in PSS specifically 4. So I am I am very thematic. That's, yes. A lot of but yes. I thought you were going to say you're the only Michael J Flores in the world or something or like I'm not the even the only Michael J in this chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, unfortunate uh, debut to your PSS series, but uh, but yeah. Debut, this sounds like you're going to have me back after I, the embarrassment that I've levied upon the pre-modern community. I'm sure everyone would love weeks. to have you back. Regardless of your results, They uh, you bring a flair <laughs> that is that no one else can match. So, I mean, I, I did just chop a $1,000 pre-modern tournament with Mano two weeks ago. Yeah, you just got to let everyone know that you do do some amount of winning in this format, right? <laughs> I, I am like... I am like an assassin of pre-modern meetups. I'm good for like a solid X and one, sometimes X and two. All right, All right so on to the match. We're going to have BK against Aaron Dix. Uh, we had BK in the booth before, and now he's flip-flopping. Uh, let's check out... What, what decks are banned? I uh, actually know this because I talked to both of them this week, and I don't remember now. Oh, okay. Well, I have brought that up on screen. So the decks that BK, BK brought are this girl... Uh, the Rock and Counter Parfait. His Counter Parfait deck is banned. Aaron brought Zombies, Sly, and Fluctuator. His Zombies deck was banned. Oh, nice. So, so uh, Zombies is banned. So it's going to be Fluctuator or Mono Red. So, I mean, Aaron's got to want, like, Mono Red against The Rock. Is BK one of these... I don't want to say a pejorative statement against people who think that the rock can beat mono red <laughs> just saying. Um, but is he one of those folks? I mean, I can't imagine Aaron wants this girl against mono red. Like I'm a mono red head and I don't want silver Knight worship of exalted angel on the other side of the table ever. Certainly not. I will, I will agree there. And I will say one thing is BK is only playing three ravenous Bayloth, So that, <laughs> has to hurt your red matchup but yes um, <laughs> not enough yes not enough that the deck should exist okay uh so yeah let's uh take a look at what the the players did settle on so if as i were we... aaron i would have played fluctuator did you see the video of me playing fluctuator at like the playtest session on sunday yeah we'll come back to that so bk he has picked this girl so probably part of the reason that you talked about it is this deck has some game against the red deck uh, there's you think? <laughs> rem removal spells. There's four exalted angels. There's like mother of runes, which can protect things, and then um, the plan of like worship. Just there's literal silver knight worship in yeah. this deck, right? Yeah. Like there's literal. Like, he has like also seal of cleansing against against uh, the sulfuric vortex. Um, I think that if I were BK, I would have considered playing uh, this girl because I assume Aaron is a redhead. Um, although I've met him, so I know he's not actually a ginger, <laughs> but you know, like me, I'm also a redhead. Not that I showed it in my deck selection this year, uh, but I think I would, I would have done that also. I think BK is also under the impression that if he has like a lot of seal cleansings and meddling mages, he has awesome game against fluctuator. Like all he has to do is like literally mulligan and meddling mage. And I think Aaron is in a lot of problems. He doesn't have any cards like rescind or, uh, expunge. To interact with meddling mage so you just like mage go uh it's it's tough time for aaron dix all right and let's flip over to the deck that aaron has settled on and he's going with fluctuator so uh, uh now we can talk about that video and uh and then you can talk about a little bit about this deck so if if people are newer to pre-modern like this list probably is very weird uh, do you want to explain what this deck does yeah so um when I when I saw the deck lists come out, when you posted these deck lists, I was like, I wish I had chosen this deck. I, I wanted to play two combo decks and red white. That was like uh, the paradigm that I wanted to select, and I would have loved to have the fluctuator deck instead of stasis deck as my as my third deck. It is, I fell in love with the deck like immediately, right? So it is freaking awesome. And then when I actually started playing, I so I bought the deck like immediately, right? So I have like new border fluctuators. 
Uh, <laughs> but because uh, I, I didn't know if I owned them. It turns out I own them. But I still, I just sleep these new ones because I bought them, like, when I made the deck. I have, like, white border drifting meadow also. So the way the deck works is there are um, nine stops, right? So by stops, I mean there are four fluctuators, one Songs of the Damned, one uh, Haunting Misery, one Drain Life, uh, one Lotus Petal, and one uh, Dromar's Cavern. But we'll put an asterisk on Dromar's Cavern. When I say there's nine stops, I mean there are 51 cards in the deck that cycle for two mana. If you have the card fluctuator in play and a certain number of cards in hand, we'll talk about that in a second, and you're, and you're uh, unmolested, your fluctuator is unmolested, you can draw as many cards as you draw cycling cards. And again, 51 out of the 60 cards in the deck, main deck, have cycling. So uh, just for, for example, um, oh, so let me tell you how the deck wins. So let's say you tap out for fluctuator and you start cycling. Uh, one way that you would win would be to cycle to your lotus petal play the Lotus Petal, cast Songs of the Damned with uh, 20 or more, let's say 22 or more uh, creatures in your graveyard. If you have 22, you can drain life for 20, uh, or you can just make any amount of mana if there's 20 or more creatures in your graveyard. I believe Aaron has 28 cycling creatures in his deck, and you cast uh, Haunting Misery, removing that number of creatures from your graveyard to nug your opponent for for 20 odd the dromar's cavern is only kind of a stop because if you play it on the turn that you're going to win it actually returns a cycling land to your hand all of the lands except for the dromar's cavern have cycling so that's actually another card draw spell or it's spell in quotes if you have a certain number of cards in your hand you automatically win if you're unmolested that's the thing that uh that's really interesting about this deck so if you like have a seven card hand you pretty much always win you you can't ever be in a situation where you've drawn too many stops because you can never draw uh, more stops than uh, than our cards in hand given the fact that one of the cards that you have to play to start going off is a fluctuator. So it actually reduces the number of potential stops in your deck. The fact that you've started to go off actually reduces the number of stops. However, if you look at this deck and you're like, oh, I'm just going to mulligan to Fluctuator, I'm just draw my deck, this is one of the worst mulliganing decks in all of pre-modern. Every time you go down a card, it's real bad. There's no way to get ahead. All you can do is cycle through your deck and then get enough creatures in the graveyard that you can Songs of the Damned, Lotus Petal, whatever, for the kill. There are slow play strategies that you can do, and I mean, I don't know, that's probably not going to come up in this match. But you could potentially, like, so say you're playing against The Rock, like the rocks, like I'm gonna come out therapy fluctuator. What if I kept a non fluctuator hand? I just like cycle a bunch, and they're like, I'm yeah. attacking you for one. <laughs> You're like, for yeah, sure, you are for however many turns. You're never gonna miss a land drop. I like every single card in my deck says draw card, and then eventually I'm just gonna kill you, right? So there are slow play strategies, but for the most part. If you're like mulliganing to four to get the fluctuator, you're just gonna lose. I mean, it's not gonna you lose, but you're, you're you're not gonna be able to 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 uh, complete your combo unless you're extremely lucky, uh, because you actually have to hit some amount of stops to actually win the game. It's like say say you're tapped out, you actually have to get Lotus Petal Songs the Damned, or you can't actually cast your kill spells. Um, two things that are interesting about this deck: number one. Uh, you can go off and then fail to go off in the middle like somebody kills your fluctuator or like, I don't know, something bad happens to you. You just do it the next turn. This is one of these this is one of these decks that like once you start going off, you're so far ahead uh, that you're just going to be further ahead the next turn. Uh, but then secondly, you can go off in response to a removal spell. So somebody's just like, you know, here's my fluctuator pass. And like in response, you start cycling. Uh, in that video we were talking about, uh, Lanny, who was like the... He won like a championship. Uh, championship. Um, he won like a store tournament, so I call him the champ. He actually uh, enlightened tutored for a seal of cleansing that was in his sideboard, which I let him do, uh, so that he could uh, try to interact with me. And I still killed him on the second turn because this fluctuator deck is sick. We ready to go? Yeah, we can. Uh, if you want to message the players and let them know they can get started, uh... I'm just gonna say, what are y'all waiting for? <laughs> what are y'all waiting? Or, yes, I did just end a sentence in a preposition. Don't hold it against me. Is that technically a faux pas? Like I, that was always it's like it's not. It's, I mean, it's like I don't know. It's like it, it's like spelling all right. A l r i g h t. People do it. Okay. It's in the dictionary. It's not right. The word is a l l space r i g h t. But I mean, people do the wrong thing enough times, it's considered to be okay. It's like in America, people spelling theater r e. They're like, oh, it's the concept of theater. No, it's actually just a misspelling. 
But now people spell theater R-E like when they're talking about a physical theater, and that's just offensive to anyone who can actually read. I don't know. Is that a faux pas? I don't know. But okay. we do have uh, two tap lands from each player. One's a drifting meadow, a black border drifting meadow, which is funny because... Uh... I'm pretty sure the fluctuator list I have also has white border drifting meadows. So I, when I saw your photo, I laughed. But we this have looks a, like game. <laughs> a turn two fluctuator. So, so there are only five lands to come to play untapped in the entire deck. Four blasted landscapes in the Dromar's Cavern. If I'm Aaron, I think I'd try to kill him here. Yeah, and so I have seen lists um, of the fluctuator deck. Like someone wrote like a really comprehensive article that talked about like statistics, and his version didn't play Lotus Petal because there were just a number of games. So you basically would always try and go off on turn three because you don't have the ability to do it on turn two like Aaron's trying to do right now. But it the sacrifice that you make gives you more consistency. You don't have that an extra brick that you talk about, like a stop. And so, but Aaron does have the one with the Lotus Petal and this is likely, it's, it's not deterministic, but uh, it's likely that he's going to be able to win right here. Yeah, I believe Aaron Mulligan to six, which is one of the reasons why there's a potential here. But I think he's probably, I don't think that BK can win um, for two reasons. Uh, it's too late to cast Meddling Mage. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if he casts Meddling Mage, he actually has to cast, he has his name Songs of the Damned or something, mm -hmm. and he's just dead to a Haunting Misery if, if he does that, right? So um, his best play is actually... Uh, just hard cast one of the two seal of cleansing that are in his main deck. But if Aaron doesn't kill him, that means that he has a fluctuator in his hand. So, right. because it means that he hit a terminal number of stops, there are three additional fluctuators in his deck. Uh, it looks like he's dead, though. Um, Aaron is a much faster fluctuator cycler than Michael J is. I mean, maybe he's just not taking as much joy. I had joy like every single time I cycled a card. I was like, I'm not done cycling cards. I like to draw cards. I don't know if you read the comments, but like there was literally someone who commented about like how you positioned, like where you had your graveyard relative to where you were drawing. It's like, man, people are really critical about the smallest things. <laughs> okay, so there's a Lotus Petal in play, and he passes the turn. Uh, this is actually pretty interesting. If BK kills the Lotus Petal, uh, then <laughs> Aaron's actually like a little bit slow because he has no source of black mana. It's Likely, though, that he has... Oh, there's the meddling mage. What is the mage on? Uh, I guess let's just guess what the meddling mage is on. If I were BK, I would name Songs of the Damned. Uh, so what if you just named Haunting Misery? He's, and then he's dead to Songs of the Damned Drain Life. Okay, so... so Because not every version does... does Aaron has both in... Because I've seen so some that only... Songs of the Damned, one Drain Life, okay. one Haunting Misery to get around the meddling mage. I, I think, like... I honestly think it's just too late for BK. Like, like Aaron's going to have to jump through some hoops, but if BK doesn't have, like, a seal and another meddling mage in the next two turns or something, he's just dead. Yeah, he might have a second meddling mage in that if he's able to, like, fade a turn. Then... Uh, is that a planes that BK is tapped? Yeah, it's a lobster kind of planes. I see. So Aaron's thinking... So here's the thing. All of Aaron's sideboard cards also have cycling. He has cards like Rapid Decay and Gilded Light. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do think that his deck should have had some kind of rescind or expunge. I'm going to make that change myself to the physical... Uh, excuse me, cycling fluctuator deck that I have. But the card that I added, which is probably a surprise to no one who's listened to anything I've said about pre-modern... Is, <laughs> is it abeyance? <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> Aaron, originally, Aaron was like, um, it, but that's a stop. And I'm like, it also says draw a card on it. Yeah. And then two days later, he texted me. He's just like, uh, I wish I had had uh, <laughs> Abeyance. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Abeyance counters uh, Tormod's Crypt. And it also counters, um, uh, what's the other thing that might mess you up? Counter spells or just yeah, anything. Uh, yeah. like, I, I beat two blue decks at the last meet, uh, meetup by just like leading on an Abeyance. Uh, and the, the deck's so fast that, like, if they don't have two counter spells, like, if you're on the play, it's turn four, you just cast an abeyance, they counter it, and then you just go off and kill them. Um, it's awesome. So, a second fluctuator uh, for Aaron Dix here. Uh, he has played Dromar's Cavern, returning Blasted Landscape to grip, uh, cycled the Blasted Landscape. I don't know how many cards he has in hand. So I don't know. Like, if BK actually has a second meddling mage, this could be a competitive game. Yeah, because at the game, I mean, he's dead. Uh, two, well, I wouldn't say dead because uh, if Aaron gets to the point where he's able to start game. casting creatures, then like, no, then the game continues. Like, then like, 
Nah, dog. He just names Haunting Misery and and Songs of the Damned, and it's over. And then and then Aaron plays a two three flyer that can block those meddling mages, and then he, then you get a bunch more turns, and then you could play a Barkhide Mauler. Yeah, so it looks like Aaron Mulligan to five. Uh, I can't tell because he definitely Mulligan, uh, but he hit a lot of stops. I get that, so that's the thing about the Fluctuator deck. It is very powerful, but it, like every single card that you Mulligan, it gets so much worse. Like, and the reason it gets so if you have an infinite amount of time, and by an infinite amount of time, you're like yeah, I'll three four turns, uh, you'll always win. But uh, the but like you could just stop, as you can see there. I thought that Aaron had the game. He had Fluctuator in play on turn two. Uh, meddling Mage was down, but um, you know needed the second Meddling Mage for uh, for the Winsies there. Uh, one thing to note: uh, the Fluctuator deck can only. I, I think maximally can deal uh, 20. It's a sideboard a game. Aaron's probably going to side out four creatures for four like interactive spells. Probably like some kind of a. I don't. Maybe not. Right. He he's not worried about like uh, a counter spell or a, is there Tormod script in BK's sideboard? No. So BK's sideboard has two Hydra Blast, two Null Rods, a Pyroblast, and a Blue Elemental Blast. A red elemental blast, a seal cleansing, two pyroclasms, two pyrostatic pillars, two. I think it's aura fracture. Is that the and then yeah, so, one worship? So, so it, BK's sideboard sucks for this matchup. Yeah. Like it, just point removal for fluctuator is far too slow. Um, like I said, you literally go off in response. Yeah. Is there? Um, I don't even know if I want any of these cards. Like, is are any of these an upgrade? A seal of cleansing might be an upgrade then compared to sword sepultures. So the thing that I was going to say is there's a terminal amount of damage that the Fluctuator deck can do. Let's say that it's in the neighborhood of 44 damage, right? It's probably, probably 50 damage, I think, is the most damage you can do. That's assuming every single creature's in your graveyard. Um, you get uh, a very large uh, Songs of the Damned for 28, and then you can deal 28, and then... Uh, you still have enough to drain life for 21. So uh, maybe 49 damage is the terminal amount of damage the deck can do if like, you get every single creature, something like that. Um, so it's actually the case that uh, Swords to Plowshares, Exalted Angels, even small amounts of life gain can put you out of the range of a single kill spell. Um, and in interestingly, there are two things that are important to think about this. If you cast Songs of the Damned, that's fine. But if you cast Haunting Misery, that's it, right? Like, your creatures are removed from the graveyard. So uh, you kind of need to you kind of need to have it all there. Um, and so it, it might sound like, you know, 49 is a lot. But if Aaron, like you saw there, Aaron had 75% of an unbeatable draw, but it wasn't quite unbeatable enough. Uh, you, and there are a lot of times where you're just like, all right, I can only drain from 22 one exalted angel hit is going to put you out of kill spell uh, kill range there okay i have aaron's list up his sideboard has four clear which removes enchantments gilded light which is typically against tormod's crypt a uh, rapid decay which i guess is probably against faster combo decks is the idea that use the graveyard and then lull which is against creature decks lull. and then an, an extra songs of the damned do, do... I, I actually would consider putting the extra songs of the damned in because uh I, I would want to give BK a handicap because uh, <laughs> I'm playing an unfair an unfair combo deck. Here's a. Here's I was gonna say because I don't think BK has any counter magic that interacts with like the. No. So it's like, uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think anything changes. It's possible that I think BK probably brings in a seal cleansing over a swords. Maybe he doesn't, but it's possible they're just running back the exact same sixty, both of them. Uh, I think that a seal of cleansing over a swords is an upgrade. Okay. Uh, I don't think I would go so far as to play the aura fractures. I think if you're at the point where you can like aura fracture, you're you're already dead. Like Aaron, uh, or Aaron's draw was so bad that you're gonna win with regular stuff, right? Like that's it, pretty pretty unlikely. I think. Um, oh, so here's here's a funny thing. So I you know, I never knew him before, but I ended up making friends with Aaron after after LobsterCon. We talk about decks a lot. Um, you know, stuff like that. And so I was talking to BK about about his matchup this week, which is weird because I just completely forgot like what either of them banned or whatever is playing. And he's like, text me, he's just like, Are you just giving Aaron scouts? <laughs> <laughs> but I was just like, 
He's wagging his finger at me. Yeah, Mike, uh, you're giving him scouts. <laughs> I don't know if that's the case. So uh, I have a brother that used to play Magic. Like, probably, we started around, like, Onslaught is when we played. And so he never got into pre-modern, and certainly not as as much as I did. Um, you into pre-modern? Yeah. <laughs> so I've, I've tried to convince him to play. We live actually very close. And uh, just the other day, he, he texts me, he goes, do you have the Fluctuator deck built? And I'm like... I I have the main deck built. I don't know if I have a sideboard, and I don't like. It, this was not prompted by anything. I didn't ask him about like, do you want to play pre-modern anytime soon? And he just like messaged me, and I'm like, yeah, I got this deck built. He's like, I think I want to play that deck. I'm like, this is the deck that I think because he used to like like Goblin Tar Belcher back in the day, and that's exactly what Fluctuator feels like to me. And I, so I don't know. I hope he picks it up and he just starts <laughs> just killing people on turn two. Fluctuator is so bad against so many common things. I think there's like a, a very, very low skill curve to playing against Fluctuator. Like I, I, I was, I mean, I'm anticipating playing against Aaron in a couple of weeks. I mean, I'm already dead, right? I'm, I'm 0-4. Uh, but I thought that Aaron had the best setup of any player in the in the PSS. Um, and I, I thought Rich was the worst for me, but I, I just thought like if I just had like a seal of cleansing in my main deck of my red white deck and like a torment crypt in the sideboard, I wouldn't have to ban his fluctuator deck, right? Like it's I can just mulligan to enlightened tutor, and I he can't really win. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I don't have those cards, right? But because I I failed on the skill curve. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I do like the idea of bring because like Aaron is a very proactive like his three decks are very proactive they, the zombies the sly and the fluctuator they're they're aggressive in that sense but what i do like about the fluctuator is it operates on a different axis it's like a combo deck that like makes your opponent like mulligan a certain way kind of like what the stifle knot decks do but with the cards that are good against fluctuator are not very good against a deck like sly or a deck like zombies and so i do like the idea of bringing um the fluctuator deck in Aaron's hand. I think they're asking if they can go. Uh... He's saying, so BK is asking if they can start. Yes. Can I tell them yes. they can start? Uh -huh. All right, I told them they can start. He's like shouting at me all in caps. You have to tell us we can start. Shut up. <laughs> Actually, that's, that's unnecessarily mean. He's one of my best friends. <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't be unnecessarily mean then. I think people knew they knew last uh, round when BK was commentating. They could tell that he wanted you to win that match. Like when you were down, he's like, just his his mannerisms or the way he was phrasing everything. He's like, well, Mike, could, Mike could still come back. One was in jest because I'm like, I said something like you were completely dead. I'm like, it looks like Mike's gonna have a hard time winning. <laughs> well, I I was gonna play the stasis deck, and then like, so BK just to be fair to BK, he's just like. If you choose to play the red white deck, you can't blame me, right? But BK, I called BK. I texted you. I'm like, I just called BK. I'm not going to do the thing I was going to do. But play red white. BK says, oh, you can win. But <laughs> let's play this matchup. It's winnable. The games are really close. I mean, I actually, considering the fact that, like, how badly I was down in resources against Rich, like, it was, like, still winnable ish. Mm -hmm. Okay. We should be paying attention to this. Yeah. So we do have a turn two fluctuator from Aaron. Uh, but BK gets There's to a... untap and cast a meddling mage, which... So what's that meddling mage on? No it's... one will ever know. It's a mystery. I mean, we'll know it's not Songs of the Dam if Songs of the Dam gets cast. Uh, so it could... So here's the thing. If you look at Aaron's lands, he has a drifting meadow and a blasted landscape in play. He can tap for white and one. This actually ends up mattering. A lot of like the cards that Aaron casts interactively, for example, like a Gilded Light. So Dromar's Cavern is actually the perfect uh, bounce land for this deck because you actually cast a lot of your stuff. Um, sometimes, you know, you kind of need Drifting Meadow for Gilded Light or in, if you were a genius of Ants, um, you know, uh, you, you could need uh, Black for Rapid Decay, for example. Uh, what is somebody saying something? Oh, I, I was letting him have a life total. I think BK is at 17 from when he cast his oh uh, meddling mage. But It's not enough that he had turn two meddling mage both games. He also has to cheat. <laughs> Y'all Wisconsin people, shade. <laughs> All right, so Aaron's going to do his cycling thing. At this point... So if the game goes on longer, where he can just find black sources and play them out, and he could cast 
haunting misery. Uh, that is one way of getting around. That this is under the assumption that meddling mage is on songs. Yeah, I'm going to ask him what the meddling mage is. Yeah. Is that okay? Because well, the thing is, if you name haunting misery then that doesn't really stop anything because there's still a songs of the dam and drain life and so i have to imagine songs of the dam i, I is... think i would have named songs of the dam yeah but so here's the thing it, it, he loses to um dromar's cavern uh lotus petal if it's on songs of the dam okay Aren't you glad you have me? I've actually played this. Day. Yeah, and I, that's I not really. It's not. That's not very hard to do from this. No. this point. So I mean, unless you. I mean, I don't know if Aaron stopped. Okay, there's one. Okay, he's tapping it presumably for B. Oh, he's just gonna drain him. What's going on here? Oh, he, uh, he won't have enough to. I was to say. He, oh no, he's floating colorless, and oh, he cast songs of the damned. Oh, I guess haunting misery was. I don't. I don't know what the meddling mage is on. Oh, BK's on 17. Oh, what if it matters? <laughs> it mattered. <laughs> Drain life. I, I don't understand why you wouldn't name songs of the dam. Like, why would you pick one of the, when you know there's two win conditions, what is naming one half? Unless maybe like you're going to untap and play the other meddling mage. If you're going to kill somebody with drain life. You need Songs of the Damned and Drain Life. If you're going to kill somebody with Haunting Misery, you lose to Dromar's Cavern Lotus Petal. So if you only have one meddling mage, then naming Haunting Misery is extremely reasonable because Aaron might just go like, my one of my only five untapped lands, Lotus Petal, kill you, right? Versus having to do a double spell sequence. Okay. Uh, so it is reasonable. If I were Aaron, no clears in my deck right now. Go for the throat. B1. Go for the throat. <laughs> clear. Clear. What are you clearing? He cycled it. Did we see a clear? Yes. What What enchantment is he afraid of? Worship. I mean, is this game going to get to that point? I don't Oh, you know what it could be? Like, what if BK plays a Seal of Cleansing on turn two? He can just clear it and then untap and cast his fluctuator. Yeah. Aha! That's a reason might you might want to have clear. Also, you can cycle it if they try to kill your fluctuator in response. Uh, this is actually, I mean, BK's literally just gonna mulligan a meddling mage and he's on the play. So I think there's a lot of trouble. <laughs> like BK will go to three cards. Yeah. Yeah, he can't lose. Okay, he can lose by not getting Meddling Mage in his first four, one, two, so it's three, seven, twelve, eighteen. If he doesn't have Meddling Mage in his first 25 cards, he can lose the game. That's actually the calculus right now. I don't it's, think Aaron has any way to stop him. If he oh, it's got to be way more with the London Mulligan than that, right? Oh, you're right. It's yeah. a, a, 25 <laughs> cards is preposterous. It's uh, so it's seven, three, four, five, five, seven. It's 35 cards. Yeah, he gets 35 cards. He wins the game on turn two. So here's Aaron's. Here's, here's what Aaron can do. Aaron can win on turn one. Yeah, if he has well on turn one, yeah. you just say by like playing fluctuator. Last of landscape, lotus, lotus petal, petal fluctuator. That's a lot harder to do. Yeah, he uh, has one lotus. Pattern. He's got one lotus pattern. and four blasted landscapes. Yeah, I don't... yeah. Uh, but I mean, literally, BK has thirty-five cards to get to a meddling mage. I, I think it's extraordinarily unlikely that uh, Aaron wins the match. I think he had to win that game one. Um, and I mean, I don't know. I thought Aaron was going to win game one, though. Sure. Like I mean, like game. given the the initial sequence, it. I mean, I don't know how many cards he had in his hand, but. It, he got maybe got a little bit unlucky. Yeah, here's but... BK knows the London Mulligan rule. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, ESPN check marker. No, I have had a matchup where it, it came down down to this, where I just needed meddling mage. I was a blue white stifle nut, and I just needed meddling mage to win. And I mulligan to four and didn't find it. And... Does anybody know which is the best stifle knot deck? Like, I no, mean, like. Matelski's playing Stifle Knot with no Lotus Petal, and he just six owed the monthly. Is that the right one? I mean, like, 
Roland Chang, who's in my circle, plays it with Lotus Petal. I was watching, I don't know if the people at home do this, but I was watching uh, the old episodes of the Cloud Goat Ranger channel. <laughs> I watched, you know, I, I don't get me wrong, I've watched hundreds of hours of the old Cloud Goat <laughs> like pre maybe dozens of hours is more likely than hundreds of hours i don't know if there are hundreds of hours um but there was like a blue green uh 12 12 deck and i mean i really mm -hmm. like a nimble mongoose uh that deck was very that makes no sense uh what some of the some of the things that were that were placed in it in what numbers but he beat aaron <laughs> so. yeah i so the the seven lists were a lot more popular a while ago when like it it they used to beat up on the red decks really well, um, and Why they still. I I think it's just there's more like seal cleansings and like and the and the decks that play seal cleansings also have swords of plowshares. But and that has nothing to do with the red decks. No, no, not the red decks. I mean, they the red decks have just more overloads. I think is they, they still like the, the red deck does not want to play against a dreadnought deck. No, but, no, no. Last time I played the red, the red deck, I beat two Dreadnought decks. All right. Well, if you're doing something I, right, I guess, then I'm doing I, something wrong. I pyroblasted their Stifle. Yeah. And then their 12-12 died. And then <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> I play Detonate because I like to give my opponents a little bit of an, an extra edge. A little sting. <laughs> so nobody's like in their six-card hands either. Yeah, uh, they're they're gonna. I, I think Aaron it. is literally going for Lotus past the landscape fluctuator. Um, I mean, there's no way that you could think that because by the time you mulligan that much, you just won't have any cards to cycle. Okay. Uh, so if BK goes to three cards to get to the meddling mage. It's not that bad. Like you have time right. to come back. You have ten turns. If you have seven, seven turns is more than enough to win the game. What if Aaron just tries to go like a, a beatdown plan against the meddling mage? Oh come on. Cast the Archive Mauler against the, the, against Exalted Angel? The Pendril Drake. <laughs> that guy flies. He's he's not quite as big as a lightning angel, They're but literally uh... lightning angel exalt like this BK is <laughs> playing the beatdown destroying beatdown deck and you want him to go to He doesn't even have wild dogs. <laughs> I, I had this conversation with Flint like the other day. I'm like, oh, why don't we play wild dogs? So we have another we have another dimension to our deck. It's just yeah. like you don't play wild dogs so that you don't play the fucking wild dogs. <laughs> like if you play, start playing the wild dogs, you're not gonna win. <laughs> it's terrible. I I think I have wild dogs on my list. <laughs> yeah, so he doesn't want me to play the wild dogs. I mean, I don't know why I didn't just play elves, right? So I played elves in the thousand dollar tournament. I played against Stasis in the top eight. You know there are eight cards in the Elves deck that say untap target elf, and four of them return a forest to your hand. Yeah, is queer yeah, queer and range is pretty good. <laughs> or you know what's really good? Survival of the fittest. You know why it's so good? I just discarded my hand <laughs> and I was like, I failed to find. I failed to find like six times. Just like, why did you do that? I'm like, because now you're gonna deck out and I'm not gonna take <laughs> any damage from your black vice. <laughs> it's just like, oh, <laughs> that's unbeatable. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> in here yep. that's like the wild dog's dimension to the fluctuator deck discarding <laughs> your hand to survival of fittest so you don't take any any uh black vice damage you know what card's really good against elves cursed totem yes <laughs> that's, bad times. <laughs> that's something that's in the sideboard of stasis i think uh yeah, I destroyed it with an Antuco Vigilante. I was in playtesting the other day. I was just like, oh, I was just playing to like flip an Antuco Vigilante with an Anger in my graveyard. And I'm then I just like before passing the turn, I was just like, oh, I could just like make spare mana with this Priest of Titania and attack for an additional 19 damage. <laughs> so I did that. <laughs> Man, the Elves deck is sick. What's worse, the fact that none of us played the Elves deck or B? You choose what B is. It's I I can't believe that no one thought that that no one brought elves. That that is very surprising. I know last um, PSS it was much of a like people metagame like they they built their lineups with the idea of people are going to bring elves and people did bring elves. There were plague spitters and engineered plagues and lava darts and everywhere. So I was like I can understand there, but like the way people have built their decks, I don't know. Maybe their their plan was just to ban elves. Uh, so cause, because I don't feel like I see as much of those hate cards in in the list so yeah i don't know yeah it looks like bk has finally decided i think he's mulligan to the point um 
Yep, yes. Yes, they're good to go. Yeah, uh, that was with the thumb. I'm like, what is that thumb up for? We've got a reflecting oh, pool. Good to go. Yep, they understood. Okay, reflecting pool, opener. Uh, polluted Delta. I mean, BK's got to have, like, City of Brass. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! BK! <laughs> Do you have Aaron Dix? Has got it. All right. How many? So, I don't know how many cards he's got. He's going uh, for it. So what? What would? How many cards does BK so did he sad. mulligan to that no he idea. would? Are there? Is there any permutation of hand that you would keep that didn't have a meddling mage that you would mulligan to four? I would four. go to three cards. Okay, I think so too. I think that. I think BK was like he had the reflecting pool and he's like has a high likelihood of getting a white. Maybe he mulliganed to one land. He, I'm sure he has a meddling mage in his hand. Okay. He just doesn't have the white mana and he's just like this deck has two planes, right? Yeah, uh, I don't know the exact mana. I know a lot of the white. There four of the white sources are coastal towers. So at this point, it's might. Well, I guess it wouldn't be too slow, but no, um, you can still cast it. Yeah. Um, I, this looks pretty bad if you are a Wisconsin cheesehead quality fan um <laughs> not good i mean aaron's so fast do you see how he cycles yeah uh, I, I think it's just because he doesn't take joy in each card draw i will note that aaron only has he has three cards i think total in hand so it's going between two and three when he cycles so there is a definite chance that he has to pass the turn yeah but he's like so far ahead right the thing is when you pass the turn with the fluctuator deck like, there's not necessarily a lot of stuff the opponent can do. Like, in this situation, BK's options are to play a meddling mage and name a kill spell if he, in fact, can cast a meddling mage, which is not currently the... Oh, Aaron's going to kill him. It doesn't matter. Song's the Damned. Uh, probably, like, a terminal amount of haunting misery here. Yep. Uh, one, one, two, three four five, yep we do six. see the meddling mage and so it was just the mana that wasn't quite there to cast it I, so. it looks like he went to three cards okay uh yeah. so uh if i were a, a pre-modern lottery picker uh you should just do the opposite of everything that i say <laughs> uh you know I, I i i don't know i i picked the wrong wrong winner of uh two of these three games uh and in addition um i apparently picked the wrong decks every week to play so <laughs> just do whatever the opposite is that i said but to be fair i think that red white deck is really good um but it's just so bad against the kind of decks that rich shea likes to play that's the that's the thing all right i'm going to jump over to our other scene and unmute the players so we can hear what they're talking about Ooh, let's do that so you curse you curse me Oh, nice job. <laughs> That's the way you got to win. <laughs> is, is Aaron uh, no, a I think, yeah, I, yeah, that was, uh, oh, that was impressive. I think you really beat the odds, but it's, it's I cool. think so, too. <laughs> it's fine. I think I, I think I missed the odds in that first game, though. Like, I think I was, like... Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty... I'll unmute well, I don't know. You, you mulliganed, and you had a turn two fluctuator. I think if you yeah. run it out, like... What, run it out 20 times, and how many times do you think you kill me? You know? uh, with with the first turn fluctuator. Or with the second the first turn, turn fluctuator. fluctuator Se second turn the, fluctuator. Yeah, uh, second turn fluctuator. Um, six car are You went first, right? Mm -hmm. So you had um, six, you had five cards in your hand? Like, going yeah. out with five cards is hard with, you, with your deck. You have three... You have three blanks with fluctuator. Yeah, um, I don't know. So I think it's it's fairly or... unlikely. I think that you kill me. I'm gonna say it's um, more than half the time. That turn. That you... yeah, that was that was right where I wanted to start things off for sure. Um, that said, um, it's not like it's it's pretty close. I think because I have to bet. I have to, with my doubling double meddling mage. I think it's pretty close. Game one. Like yeah, I don't know. Oh my god, the doubling meddling, one. the double meddling yeah. mage. Well, I scooped a doubling, yeah. double meddling mage on the two yeah. cons. I mean, your your odds to get fluctuator and um, the coming to play on tap line are like pretty low, you know. <laughs> yeah, much worse well, than my ability to get a 
metal image. But... Well, and I, I tucked uh, like a Dromar's Cavern uh, there. I'm like, I'm just going to swing for the fences here and hope that he can't play the stupid meddling mage. <laughs> and then the Shiv the Shivan Reef just felt so good there. <laughs> it sure did. And unmute us. <laughs> Yeah, I've unmuted yeah. you guys. Okay. All right. So, have we determined that Aaron is a witch? Like, <laughs> DK, like you cursed me, and so does Aaron have? Witch oh, I didn't powers? unmute them. I don't want to hear all my oh, guests. So, so I'm only gonna I'm only gonna unmute Hoyt because I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> From Flores, better... whatever he's saying, I can't hear him. Yeah, he I'll, uh, he is around. supportive of you, BK. I don't think I don't think he. I think you're thinking he's on the wrong side. He's definitely in your corner. <laughs> no, <laughs> so. I Hey, Mike. <laughs> I, I, you know. <laughs> LOL. No, no. I was actually saying, like, have we determined Aaron is a witch? And if so, why does he use his powers only to win pre-modern games? Like, <laughs> you know, I would. If there are other probability manipulation of things that you could do, I would win the oh, lottery. Man. I don't know. I man. had a five-card hand I could have kept that would have been fire, ice, worship, uh, land, land, land. Yeah, yeah, that's terrible. We thought you would mulligan I, to three in, in, uh, in order to get a mulligan. I sideboarded mage. in the clears just in case of a mulligan, but I'm like, if I if he gets to four lands, I lose this anyway. So I only sideboarded in two. I uh, started yeah. off sideboarding in four, and then I'm like, why am I doing? I just got to get creatures but, in the yard. Aaron, how I was many? About whether, I mean, my odds are still better to get a get even a three even a three card meddling mage hand wins there right i thought you were yeah. almost certain to win i thought that aaron was like mulliganing to like first turn blasted landscape lotus petal get the fluctuator down because that's the that's one of the only hands that's fast enough to beat a beat a i actually mage had a chance play. to do that in uh in game one i could have uh i could have played it that way but you don't have to do it in game one he's not on the play right you run the play right in game one. that well exactly <laughs> which is why I'd... the die roll was huge <laughs> no, it actually well, the, the die roll matter. You murder. you you broke serve on a in a game that I think Aaron wins more than half the time. I don't. We were talking about that. Do you think the odds are that he wins there? Yeah, more than half the time. He he, he like with, it's with five cards in his hand. Yeah. He's got no. three deads in his deck. It's a, I, I mean, guess, oh, go ahead. I think if he gets a meddling mage before I get a fluctuator. I'm in real bad shape. You're on the name play. You already had the fluctuator in game. Oh, you're talking. You're talking about uh... mm -hmm. in game one. Oh, in Look, game one. Sorry. BK, like, what is your first meddling mage even name? When Songs he misery, when he had fluctuator time. in game one. I named haunting misery. Um. Yeah, I think that that's probably right because he can go like because he can just yeah. literally go like Dromar's cavern lotus that'll it, kill yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I but, named haunting misery and then I named drain life. Well, when you had two meddling mages, it's pretty unlikely that yep. Aaron can win. Uh, Hoyp was saying, what if he plays Pendrel Drake here? And I was just like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know that there's like Lightning Angel and Exalted yeah. Angel in the other deck. Right? Lightning Angel like, would have won the day. <laughs> I just get excited when people can cast a four mana two, three flyer. I mean, like there's a four mana of three, four Vigilance flyer in the other deck. It has some other abilities. Yeah. I, I, you know, uh, it, it won the state championship for probably the greatest uh, state championship of all time, a 2006 New York state championship. I don't remember who won that one, though. Probably the, one of the most competitive state championships ever in the United States. I would right? say probably the most competitive. Uh, it's uh, unlikely <laughs> that, that there's a... Actually, 2005 was insane, dude. The Juicy Blue year, I lost Definitely my girl failed me. Uh, let's this see. This girl, what happened? Chris Pakula. I'm going to send a hate oh, letter to, directly to him. Look, dude, Aaron's a witch. And he, like, yeah. if I like, he's basically Wanda Maximoff, he could be like <laughs> walking between universes, killing Illuminati well, at will. So, and he so chooses that, his like, powers to win a pre-modern game. That if I'm on the craps table and Aaron Aaron walks up to the table to start rolling, I'm just like borrowing money from everybody I can. Whatever he does. <laughs> whatever he yeah. does. Put it all in the cover line. He's never <laughs> I think he saved Can, up all of the karma for like the name calling that he got, but before fifth grade, and so he just like had this karma bank, and he like never used it for anything. So he's like a lot of like karma, uh, you know, uh, compound interest, and he's just like occasionally he'll be like, "No meddling maids turn to." <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I, I uh, to fluctuate her every time. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Uh, well, the the specific thing that we were talking about there was me saying, "I hope you get Shivan." You know, I hope you get a meddling mage and just Shivan Reef. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yeah. he was he was looking hard for that meddling mage hand and he played ref, reflecting pool i'm like and uh, in my head i'm just going please be that shivan reef please be the shivan reef yeah. and he plays the shivan reef i'm like ooh, this oh i drew good. it off the top because i had to keep one land with yeah it was oh man it just happened to draw two of the there, there's there's exactly six lands that can't cast <laughs> i mean i can draw double i can drop planes and uh i can i can oh, drop man. planes reflecting pool yeah but aaron you know that bk thought i was cheating on him he texted me today he's just <laughs> like like are you scouting for aaron are you scouting for aaron and i was literally uh, like i literally told aaron i was cheering for you but yes I was scouting for aaron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the whole time it's been you know, I, I have to root for bk We've been, we, I've been puzzling over what the hell do I ban? And, uh, you know, again and again, Mike is like, I have to root for BK. BK convinced me to play the red-white deck, even though we knew that blue-white was going to be on the other side of the table. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, BK. I kept BK. saying he might be, uh, Stasis still might be right, but... Yeah, no, no, no. You said that I wasn't allowed to blame to Stasis, you. Though. Uh, I think yeah, he should... Uh... Now, that matchup was super winnable. All right, he like I think so. He has the advantage, but it was winnable, and I, I can't. This one was also winnable for me. Uh, I think this matchup <laughs> is dramatically in favor for you. Uh, yeah, meddling mage is tough because Aaron, you don't have rescind or uh, expunge in your sideboard, right? No, uh, and I got <laughs> rid of just for the PSS. I got rid of uh, uh, sicken as well. Yeah, but you need two sickens. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, if you're playing against BK, you need all four sickens. Yeah. I think my odds are actually better in this matchup than they are versus Mono Red with this deck. Like, I think Mono Red's a better deck against me than. I think I, I think Mono Red was better against uh, both of these decks, but I really kind of wanted to play Fluctuator. Uh -huh. uh, and I was I just. Say. My, thing, just my thought feeling, was, you know? can you imagine being so rich that you're just tired of winning with mono red every time? <laughs> right. like, yeah. uh, What's this guy's life like? Uh, <laughs> Urza's so Pommel again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pay mana for my artifacts oh, this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can't imagine being that rich. Yeah, on paper, I think things looked really good for BK. Kind of, eat, no matter what deck that Aaron brought, and um, yeah, you're able to just squeak one out, and luck luck was on favor favored you tonight. I think um, so. Yeah, but yeah, that's why we play the games. It's not like we just uh, we don't yeah. just say this is what I have and we pick a winner. You got to play. Th I thought I had a real oh, chance. Oh, I'm game put my most disgruntled face on for you. <laughs> Specifically, game one, I thought I had a better so. My, the reasoning for going with this deck, uh, like, I thought I had game one in the bag because I thought for sure he's going to put me on red. So he's not going to mull to a meddling mage hand. Uh, meddling mage isn't great against red. Uh, but I so, might just have it, right? You might just have it, right. 30% uh, of the time. <laughs> but when I got to play first, I'm like, okay, now we're really liking this. Okay, you know, and then, and then bricking that hard i'm like oh well i guess i lost this match and i just when I, well, yeah when i won game one i'm like i thought like, it was over possibly win this match like <laughs> yep 100 <laughs> percent. well good games good, good luck games. in the uh in your next round yeah uh because yeah aaron's gonna be back for the next round and he will be up against who are you playing you're Playing Ryan, Ryan Grodzinski. So, um, yeah. yeah oh, well, Mike, you got to put me in the booth. I got some shit to talk here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, is there anything you guys want to add before we let you go and get our players set up for the, the next round? Don't play Fluctuator, kids. <laughs> <laughs> get it home. Dude, it's awesome. It's Don't fun. Be, this is a witch. <laughs> Why don't we start talking about Michael J's redemption arc? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Act five. Yeah. PSS five is gonna be all Michael J. Yeah. yeah. I, I I would be an embarrassment to the entire pre modern community if I was asked back for PSS five. <laughs> <laughs> like, can you imagine being like, I don't know, Olorade? I mean like <sighs> <laughs> 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 O 
oh seven like, gets a rebuy. Yeah. <laughs> All I did was top eight five pro tours. <laughs> Come back and play elves flawlessly. The, the kid who begs me to sign an Urza's bobble gets asked back. <laughs> oh, yeah. White Urza's bobble over here <laughs> with his 07 record. Fifth edition Urza's bobble. Oh, man. You have to be like fifth, Jared right? Doucette. Like, like some other pillar of the pre modern community being like 07 Michael J with his stupid riff deck. <laughs> You're Aaron, required did you to play Rift against everybody else, Mike. Oh my god! So I'm literally chatting with BK during your playing for because I'm like literally had all these tweets be like, "Aaron Dix is so unstoppable. He just top eight in another event." And Aaron texts me, he's just like, "You got to take that down and make top eight yet." Am I even top eight? <laughs> no problem. And then he like sits down, and then they put this deck up, and they're like, "I'm like, oh shit." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. man. Nice. I was cheering against myself. <laughs> on, on that one, yeah. Mike jinxed you though. It's yeah. his fault. You didn't it make yeah. it. He jinxed you tonight too. He, he did the same thing to you, BK. Uh, he said Mike's that. The icer. Yep. Just, just need a meddling mage. And why I'm can't like, I? Why can't I jinx Florida. my opponents? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, that's who needs jinxing. Because you talk yourself up too much. That's probably why. <laughs> what did I talk about? I, I've been so self-deprecating in this conversation. That's, that's, that's you, Mike. Well, a, a lot of it had been more with we were bringing up the rock, and you just like to poo poo on the rock. So I don't. Okay, just I actually want to get this out so, so people can like bookmark this. If there's one player on the planet who has an emo who has a legitimate emotional attachment to the rock, one player it's Saul Malka. But after Saul Malka, it's, it's me. Right? It's Jer Jerome Romine. That's who I was going to say. Forget <laughs> about anybody else. This is a real story. No Jared one had Romine. ever played. BK knows this is true. No one had ever done anything with The Rock. Saul was on a team with me and BK. My friends ran out of cards for tricks. And they're like, play these. I'm like, okay, I'll play this deck that Saul made, right? So they gave me the green and black cards. I won a Grand Prix trial because Bill Macy said that he was going to go to Grand Prix Las Vegas, who was also one of our teammates. And I'm like, oh, I'll go, I'll go room with Bill. I hadn't seen him in years. Right. So I won this Grand Prix trial and I beat Mike Pistilnik in the finals. Okay. Mike Pistilnik is like, this deck is great. Do you want to work together for, for Las Vegas? Fast forward to Las Vegas. I won the PTQ in Las Vegas and Mikey P won the Grand Prix in Las Vegas. Right. Saul almost changed the name of the deck from the rock to Goldberg. Because it's GB, because I never lost. Mm -hmm. It was like, because back then Goldberg's whole thing was the streak and he never lost. If you're like a wrestling <laughs> fan, like Saul is. So like, I'm like, literally like, I'm like 36 and O in a, in a, in, a, in a, with the rock. So I'm like, he's like, oh, we should change it to Goldberg because, because it's because of the streak. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm telling you, like, anybody's allowed to like the rock. I won all of the original tournaments of the rock. Mm -hmm. I won the first Grand Prix trial. I won the first PTQ and I was directly responsible for the first Grand Prix win of The Rock. I don't like The Rock and Pre-Modern because it's not good. <laughs> not because <laughs> like I don't, I'm like a rock hater. I am a rock lover. <laughs> I am like literally behind Saul Malka. I get to like The Rock the most. I think, reasonably speaking, however, The Rock in Pre-Modern is this deck. It's like, oh, I'm going to put Ravenous Bellathan, put Wall of Roots and Blasted Herb in my deck and fight the red deck. Guess what? It doesn't beat red! <laughs> I, it's funny to me when I like read comments in like the pre modern forums or like, you're like, blah, 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 the rock, the rock. The people who make those comments somehow think they have played more games of pre modern The Rock than I have. <laughs> I have played more games of pre modern The Rock than they have. I just play pre modern all day. Can't you see the videos of me fluctuating? <laughs> I love to play pre modern. I have probably played 300 games of The Rock versus Mono Red. I know which side wins. It's not the rock. That's all I got to say about that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know how we're supposed to follow it up. So, um, Mike, have you, ever beat, have you ever beat the rock with mono red? Mike, have Mike I ever Hoyt? beat the rock with mono red? Yeah, Michael Hoyt. No. Oh, I don't know. Well, have you ever played beat an red? Yeah, I've, I mean, uh, I've won from both sides and I've lost from both sides. So I've, um, I've won from both sides, same. just not very often with the rock. You don't, <laughs> you don't lose all the time. It's just not very good. All right. Um, so let's take a short break to get things ready for our next round. Uh, sure. So sit tight, everyone. We will be back shortly. <laughs> 